welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos, and today we're going to be doing these epoxy coaster wine glasses. These are so easy and so fun to make. I know you guys got this. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today into the description box below so that way you guys can purchase those items if you would like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and let's wake up, prep these tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. So I went to the Dollar Tree, Dollar Twenty Five Tree, and I picked myself up these wine glasses. So a dollar twenty five a piece, not bad at all, and they're pretty big. You know, I, I was actually a little scared that they were a little too big. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and peel that sticker off the bottom, and then I'm just gonna take some rubbing alcohol and clean off any residue that might have been left on the bottom, and kind of clean that entire bottom base up as well. Now the coaster molds that I'm going to be using, I purchased from Michael's, but you can purchase coaster molds from all over the place. So, you know, if you already have some on hand, just use those, you know, but I bought these at Michael's and I thought they worked really well. And when I went to go place my, my glass down in there, they fit perfect. Mine fit all the way up to the edge of the mold, as you can see here, and I thought, again, that was just a perfect fit. I didn't want it too big, I didn't want it too bulky, so this was just right for me. Now the epoxy that I'm going to be using today, you just want to use your regular cure time epoxy. This is going to ensure that all those little bubbles that might be in the epoxy have time to rise and you have enough time to be able to do what you want to do. So I actually have four ounces altogether of epoxy. Yes, two pumps each of my A and B, which one pump is one ounce, so four ounces altogether. Two ounces of A, two ounces of B mixed right into my cup there. And as you can see, I'm just putting a little bit of that clear onto the bottom so that way when I place my my wine glass down into it it kind of has a seal around the bottom as well but you guys know that wine glasses kind of have a dip on the bottom so even after I demold it which I'll show you guys there was still a little bit of a dip on the bottom which doesn't bother me because it looks like a wine glass so <laughs> but I just knew I wanted the bottom of the rim there to be able to be filled in completely and make sure that epoxy was under there as well so I'm just going to go ahead and place my wine glasses down into their molds making sure that I'm in a very level spot so that way they can cure straight up and down. Now after you put your wine glasses back in there with the little bit of clear coated epoxy on the bottom, we're going to jump right into divvying up our epoxy and getting started on the next step. Now I'm going for an abstract beach look. So I knew the colors that I wanted to use, I just wanted to use four simple colors. So I'm going to go ahead and divvy up my epoxy into four little things here, just, just enough. I, I think I filled it up to about the 20 on each of them and that was more than enough to, to fill in there. Any extra epoxy that I had on hand, I just went ahead and did some other projects that I had going. So I'd rather have too much epoxy than not enough when, when it comes to doing these kind of things. So after I have my little containers all filled up with their extra epoxy, I'm gonna go ahead and start coloring them up. So the first thing I'm gonna use, I bought a kit from Illumilite just of these dyes for that are made for epoxy. I'm gonna be using this translucent uh, ocean blue, which that was too much, a little bit goes a long ways, okay? <laughs> a very tiny amount, and that's all you need. But you see it's gonna color it this very light, clear blue, which I thought was very pretty. Now after I get that mixed up, I'm going to add a darker blue, so from the same kit, it's this uh, translucent blue. So it do it's not, it's more like navy. When you mix it, it almost looks black, but it won't be. So once you pour it out, you'll be able to see that blue color, but it's very dark. And I thought, again, it just went well with what I was doing here. And again, I can't stress enough, these epoxy dyes, you just need a little dab, okay? <laughs> just a little dab will do it, all right? <laughs> so next, I want to add some glitter, of course. We gotta have some glitter in, in our stuff. If you don't wanna add glitter, that's perfectly fine. Again, wherever your imagination takes you, let it take you there when it comes to doing these. This is just an idea that I had in mind. So into my first container here, I'm gonna add into the deep. It just is this really dark, uh, navy, chunky, metallic, glitter that I'm going to add into there that I thought went well with the with the colorants that we added into the epoxy in the other cups and I'm just going to fill that up because I don't when I stirred it up it kind of had a clear you could still see the epoxy you know what I mean so I just added a little bit more until all you could really see is nothing but the glitter so there you go so now I'm just going to add a gold color I'm going to use believe and again I'm just going to fill that up the same way that I did with the blue 
I'm just gonna stir a little bit at a time until it's nice and fully saturated with that glitter. So now is the weight game because we're using glitter. And the reason why I say that is if you went ahead and poured these glitters into the molds right now, the glitter would disperse a little too much and we don't want that. It would just spread all over the place and we don't want that. So my biggest thing that I can tell you guys is to let your epoxy sit. You don't want to let it sit until it's the consistency of when we do drips, but you definitely want it thicker than it is right now so that way that glitter holds tight and doesn't spread all over the place. And you may have just seen I spritz some rubbing alcohol over the top. Again, that another th reason why we let it sit is so that way any little air bubbles go ahead and rise to the top now, which will help out our molds as well with all the little micro bubbles. So I let my stuff sit. This has probably been about 30, maybe 40 minutes. Um, you can see it's about like warm honey. It, it's pretty, it's still, you can still, you know, pour it into your dish and it won't spread too much. If you want to wait a little bit longer just to really make sure you can do that. But I think this consistency is pretty good for me. So I'm going to go ahead and start pouring it into my molds now. So again, what we're going for is just very abstract. You want it to have the look and feel of a beach, but it doesn't have to look exactly like it. It's gonna have the details of the beach, but still just be not quite like a beach. <laughs> so I layered my gold down. Then I'm gonna come through with my darker colored blue epoxy here and do the same thing where I just layer it right up against the gold area here. I'm going to try not to fill it up too much because we still have some other colors to add in as well. And we are also going to come through and kind of layer as it sits just to, you know, add a little bit more to it. But for now, we're just trying to fill our mold and just kind of get our layers going here. Now, after I'm done with that, I'm going to come through and do the same thing with the chunky blue here. And I'm keeping it all off to one side, as you can see because it's still going to drift a little bit. And so I figure if I keep it all off to one side, it won't drift as much as I possibly could if I went ahead and did it the chunky on the other side as well, because I didn't want it to mix too much in with my light blue epoxy that I'm gonna be applying on the opposite side. Once we're done with our glitter side there, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the rest of it with this pale ocean blue color. Now, after I get this all filled in with the rest of this epoxy, we are gonna come through and add just a little bit more details. If you wanna add just a little bit more things going on before we start to let it set, then you can go ahead and do it now. But I am gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more of that gold right around the right around the edge there, just kind of filling it in just a little bit more. And I'm also gonna take my darker blue and kind of swirl it into the lighter blue just a little bit. Again, I don't want to do it too much because I don't want it to fill in too much. And then I'm going to let this sit. I probably let it sit for another 20 minutes or so. If that, you don't want to go too long because then it'll, it is going to start to harden up and it'll be a little too hard to use. But see how it's just like it's almost to the point where it almost looks like drips there. So now I like to come through and this is when I'm gonna add my extra little details of my gold. So you've seen it was barely coming off my stick and that's the perfect time you wanna come through and just kind of add any little more details. All I'm doing is just letting it drip down and then just taking it and dragging it along my coaster to kind of give it these just thin outlines of the gold. Now, right after I apply the gold, I'm going to come through with my little silicone tool here and I'm just going to give it a little bit more details. I'm going to add some swirls in there. You see it's almost to the point where it's pretty thick, but it's still going to lay back down onto itself and be nice and flat for you. So don't worry about that. You're just going to come through, add a little extra swirls if you would like to. And then I'm going to let that sit for about two to three hours. Now after two to three hours, I'm gonna come through and I have these little resin balls. They look like bubbles. I know we don't want bubbles, but then again, we want bubbles, right? But again, I'm going for this abstract ocean look. So I have these little resin beads and I'm just gonna take it and do kind of a swooping motion. So I'm gonna apply a bunch of it in, onto the top here, right there into that clear area. And then I'm gonna kind of swoop it around the stem, around to the back. The reason why I waited two, three hours is because I didn't, if you did it sooner, it would all sink to, down to the bottom. We don't want that. I wanted some on the top, some on the inside. So this is just the right consistency where the, the beads will kind of sink into that epoxy, but some will still be left up onto the top. Now, after I get done adding this little detail, I'm going to let this sit overnight and we'll be ready to demold our coaster wine glasses. 
All right, now is the fun part, demolding our coasters and seeing how it looks. So we're gonna go ahead and peel this off. Now you guys know resin kind of shrinks just a very little bit. So there is a little bit of a let or not ledge edge up on the top, but that's perfectly fine because we're gonna come through and we're gonna dome our pieces after it. This is all said and done to give it that nice, sleek, shiny, professional look. So after I demold this one, I'm going to kind of flip it over and show you the bottom and what that kind of divot looks like. It's it's not a big divot. It just looks like a wine glass to me. So it doesn't bother me. <laughs> All right, now we're ready to add some more finishing details. So with an ocean, it needs some like waves, you know, they needs the white for the waves. So I'm going to take some UV resin. I'm going to put a little bit into it, a little bit, just a tiny bit. You only need a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff, it, you know, is very thin, at least the stuff I use. And I'm going to put a little bit of my white dye into it. Again, all those dyes came in one kit, and I'll have that down in the description box. And I'm going to put a little bit of that dye right into my UV resin here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm, I have a little dish. You need something with a lid. And I just have this little ramekin with a lid and I have a little bit of water and I'm going to put two drops of dish soap into that and I'm going to shake that up really, really good. I've seen this all over the place and I thought it was so cool to kind of give wave texture with just bubbles and UV resin. So we have our UV resin with some white dye and we have our bubbles here and I also have just a UV flashlight that's going to quickly set my stuff for me and then I'm going to finish it out in the sunlight after it's all said and done. So as you see I already got kind of started here but all I am doing is taking that UV resin and just swooping it along that resin bubble line that I made. So I started off into like bigger and then I'm going to swoop it back around into smaller. So I'm just taking, you could take your popsicle stick or if you have a little silicone tool like I do, just a very, you don't want to pour it onto there. Okay. You want to use your popsicle stick or your silicone tool to be able to really get in there and make sure because this stuff is really thin and it could pour all over the place. You don't want that, <laughs> but you could come up onto the stem like I did it with my other one it really you could do however you would like it but this is just that uv resin mix with the white now after i get it all set up all i'm going to do is come through with my bubbles and start placing it over top it's not going to hurt it just the bubbles you don't want the water just the bubbles and you're going to make sure that's nice and coated with your bubbles and then after you get your bubbles applied you're just going to quickly set it with your uv flashlight or how, whatever you use to kind of set your stuff you're going to set it quickly with your UV flashlight and after you have set it with your UV flashlight you're just going to go ahead and wipe any bubbles off that might still be on there and that's all you want to do to give it that kind of textured wave look and after I wipe the bubbles off I'm just going to finish setting that UV resin either with my flashlight or placing it outside and then we'll be ready to add our finishing details. Now I'm going to be finishing my finishing details up on the flattest surface I have because we're going to be doming these pieces and I want it nice and level so I'm actually going to be using my back table to finish these up. So this is my flattest surface. And again, you want it nice and flat and even for this. <laughs> now, one of them I did want to add some details to show you guys that you can add whatever you would like to it. So I have these little crushed shells. Again, I'll put that in the description box. And we're just going abstract, okay? So I have my UV resin. I'm going to line up my little shells. I went ahead and picked them out beforehand so I knew which ones I wanted to use. I'm going to go ahead and line up my little shells. Again, just kind of going with that swoop that we were doing with the UV resin balls and with the wave look around it I'm, I'm just kind of going with it but these are fun these are whimsical it doesn't have to be perfect and you could do any type of colors that you would like I mean the sky is the limit when it comes to these you know I did be a beach one because you know it's summertime right now so that's why I did a beach one but really you could do this for any time of year or season so I'm just going to go ahead and set those shells with my UV flashlight I even flip it upside down and make sure I get the bottom as well and they'll be ready to start doming our pieces so again, I'm just using my regular Cure Time Epoxy. I just use Alumilite's uh, Plus line there with the UV inhibitors. And I have one ounce each of A and B. So two ounces all together was more than enough to be able to dome the top of my pieces. But doming is where you pour down your epoxy and you want to get it right up to the edge without pushing it over the edge. See there, I'm just pushing it right up to the edge without pushing it over. And you just want to coat the entire top with your epoxy in this manner. The reason why it's called doming is because after it's cured, it's going to have this really pretty dome shape to it. So it's going to be very finished. It's going to be very sleek and professional looking. And it just gives it just that extra 
little depth of, of character to it. And it also makes sure that our shells are going to stay put and our waves are going to stay there as well. Now, the reason why I love using my regular cure epoxy for this is because it really does help out with those bubbles too. So it gives those bubbles enough time to kind of rise to the surface. So after I'm done doming, I do come through and just spritz it quickly with some rubbing alcohol to pop any little bubbles that might have made it to the surface. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna let that cure and then they are ready to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.